Okay, out of all the things I do, I get more questions about how do you put this 954 shock onto a Honda GL500 or GL650. Uh, I've done a lot of these. I went through a lot of different shocks before I came up with this solution for my projects. Uh, I do this on my cafe project, a lot of my cafe projects where I'm using the GL frame. And what I do is I, I buy an original 954 shock and I try to buy it with the original clevis attached to it. And it comes with a stud on it, like that. What I do is I cut the stud off to start off with, and then I take the sleeve that comes in the original, top of the original shock, I take that out, and I weld it onto the edge of the clevis itself. And that'll go, it'll go directly into a GL500. But the difference between a GL500 and a GL650 is where the bottom mount is. This is a GL650 and this is a GL500. So if you're going to do this and you're going to do it on a GL650, you're going to need to source this piece right here where the shock mounts off of the GL500. Keep this from falling over. Okay. This is what the original 650 looks like. And the way it mounts is that it's just... You can see how that mounts and how that mounts. So the way the bottom of the 954 shock is, is similar to the bottom of the original GL500 shock. And when you put this in, you're going to need to space it out with some washers on each side to make spaces for it because it's a little bit narrower than the original GL500 shock. Now the other thing is, if you're going to put this clevis shock mount onto a GL650. The GL650 frame is a little bit wider by about a quarter of an inch overall. So you got to leave these dust seals out. Sure. Those are the dust seals right there. Now, I've never had a problem with it. What I do is I, I take the bushings out and I polish them real nice and I pack them full of grease and put them back together. I've actually put drilled and put grease fittings on these before, but it's really not necessary. You can get them nice and lubed and put it back together again. And install this piece back into the GL650. Now you want to, we're gonna to want to stop by just see if you can get this mess apart because this is one of the ones that was sitting out in death row. I had to take a cutting torch to it and heat it all up and get the bushings out of it. Now you can generally source this piece on eBay I've seen quite a few of them on eBay if you need to buy one. And the 954 shocks, I buy these things for like 20, 25 bucks a piece. So it's, but I, I like them because it's a, it's a three way adjustable shock. Compression, rebound, and you can adjust the spring tension. When I put them on my project bikes, I take the spring off, I blast it, and I paint it to whatever color I'm doing with the bike. So if I'm doing a black and silver bike, I'll generally paint the spring uh, silver to match. I'll paint it and I'll bake it and put it back together again. Now, if you wanted to put this on a standard bike, you can do it on a standard bike with the, with, the, uh, with the original battery box on the side, but you want to use the 929 shock. The 929 shock has the reservoir on the other side over this side instead of that side, so it doesn't in interfere with the battery box. But you're not going to be able to use the original air box. You'll have to take and go ahead and put pods on it, you know, reject the carburetors and everything to go with it. But then once you put the side covers back on, it hides all that stuff and you never even see it. So you can actually do this with a 929 shock. Anyway, I'm going to pause the video, go ahead and assemble it, and show you how it goes from there. So hang on, bear with me. Okay, I'm back. I got it installed onto the GL500 frame. And you can see how the top piece attaches. Just like that. What you might want to do, you don't really have to, but you can tack weld it onto the existing frame piece here. I find if you tighten these bolts up enough, it ain't going nowhere. Okay, this is how it attaches on the bottom, just like the original shock did, using the clevis off of the GL500. Now, the spacing on the shock, you'll need to put a couple of washers on each side. And then you should be good to go. Uh, if anybody has any more questions about this, you can email me at murphymotors at yahoo.com. Like I say, I've done quite a few of these 
help people over the years by sending pictures and trying to explain it, but this is the easiest way to show it right here. What I find is I end up with just about exactly the same ride height as the original shock with a much improved shock absorber. Anyway, there it is. Hope that helps. Thanks for watching my video.